Welcome back, mother lovers, to a brand new episode of Last Call at McLaren's, the best damn how I met your mother podcast on the internet. I am one of your hosts, Josh, here with my best bud, John. Man, how are you doing? Well, let me address something really quick. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, to the left of me, the man I used to call Lunchbox, the man I now call Snack Pack. He is my brother, <laughs> Josh. Yes. I am John, as always. I am doing amazing, all because I have a giant cup of what tonight? Not alcohol, but hot chocolate. As a throwback to our original days of recording Off the Ropes with John and Josh. (laughs) Oh, those were some good times, man. Those were some damn good times. We always had good (laughs) snacks. We always had amazing snacks, good drinks, and a horrible filming location that was my kitchen. (laughs) It's true, man. We, uh, We did not know what we were doing. I mean, we've come a long way. I mean, granted, we are way more comfortable now on camera than we were then. We were very stiff, rigid, and um, teacher-esque. Yeah, we really were. And uh, I I look back, I've I've rewatched some of those episodes, and it's like, oh, Oh, so have I. Oof, that's rough to watch. Imagine recording now, knowing what we know now, and doing off the ropes more like this. We'd have fucking viewers all the time. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, if I I'm not saying time, we should bring off the ropes back. I'm if I not, had more time, I'd say let's do it because I watch wrestling again. I do it, you know. See, I've, this, I've, I've gotten back into you it. You watch wrestling? I keep up with it just via the internet. I think sure. we would have something, but I do. I think so. I'm think I'm so. still glad that we're here with last call. Absolutely. I mean, it, pull up a seat, ladies and gentlemen. Let us <laughs> spin you a yarn tonight. It's oh, a yeah. tale. A A tale as old as time, as we talk about Season 4, Episode 5, Shelter Island. That's right. It's quite a tale as well, my friend. It (laughs) is quite the tale. (laughs) I mean, I think you (laughs) summed it up very wisely right before we went and recorded. It is a story of the worst day of Ted Mosby's life. Yes, absolutely. Uh, And we're about to get into it, folks. So, uh, yes, this episode... Aired on October 20th of 2008. We're almost lined up. And almost oh, exactly my God. Yeah, we are. 15 years ago, uh, Ted Bo- Mosby's life was uh, almost <laughs> destroyed. You know. Mosby's uh, designs has failed. <laughs> yep. Uh, this one was directed by our favorite director, Pamela Fryman. Pete <laughs> Hells yeah. yeah. And written... By Chris Harris, who's uh, written, you know, quite a few episodes. We've talked about him before. I know Chris Harris. Yeah, he... Uh, a wrestler. I mean, I doubt it's the same guy, but that'd be pretty awesome. Uh, so he's a he's a full series writer. He's, he was on the show the entire time, from, from one to nine. He did episodes like Game Night and Ten Sessions, which I thought was interesting, because that's like the start of Ted and Stella, and then he wrote the the end of Ted and Stella. So I thought that was a really cool bookend, I thought. Yeah. Uh, and then he goes on to do Tick, 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 Unpause, and several others. Uh, he was also a writer on The Late Show with David Letterman, which I didn't oh, know. I thought that was yeah, really that's interesting. That's a nice credit to uh, somebody's writing credentials. Yeah. And he's one of the showrunners of the new rebooted Frasier series that just started. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I thought that was, that was, that was pretty cool. Did All you right. know, because I didn't know this until recently, <laughs> Cheers ended with Frasier returning to the bar? I did not know that. Interesting. As they were closing down the bar, Frazier was standing outside the door, <laughs> knocking on it, trying to get in, but the door was locked because they were closing. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. You could see I, his silhouette on the outside of the door. I only ever, like, watched, like, reruns like, here and there. I, I was never, like, a, like a, all the time just, like, watching the whole thing kind of a guy for that show. But, Neither I mean, was I, I. I enjoyed it, but, you know. For what it was because everybody knows your name yeah uh okay so the summary for this one the gang all a ted uh all ted yes all <laughs> attend ted's wedding on shelter island where barney plans to get robin drunk so he can have sex with her that is a great synopsis yeah that's all you need to know uh so something i thought was funny and really it's just because i'm a i'm a child at heart uh, okay this is the 69th episode of the show. <laughs> Giggity. <laughs> oh, my God. And I mean, with everything Barney's trying to do, I think it works. I mean, it, you're not wrong. You know? I also it's, thought this was one of the... I thought it was really cool that this episode does not open with, like, 
future uh, Ted talking to the kids. Yeah, 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 it's one of the few that goes like right into everything, and then it addresses the future situation. Yeah, it just jumps right in because John. It's wedding time. It's wedding time. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this one starts off the whole gang plus Stella at the bar. Well, you and can't say the whole gang because Robin's not there. She's was she not there. there? Oh, yeah, she was in Japan. You're right. You're right. You're right. She was not there. Uh, you know what? Fuck Rob. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. Friendship over. <laughs> no. I uh, love how Stella walks in, though, and instantly he's like, I'm going to finish that. And grabs, like, Barney Scotch and just chugs. Yeah. yeah, she is pissed, John. Why is she pissed? Because mm-hmm. her sister stole her dream wedding. Yes, she did. And her sister, uh, I found out her name. I don't know if they said it. They probably did. I just don't think I caught it until I read it. Her name is Nora, which I thought was funny. They, they we, do say it a couple times. Because we get, you know, a Nora later on that is involved with Barney, obviously. And that's kind yeah. of a big thing here. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. But yeah, she uh, she's stealing all of Stella's uh, dream wedding ideas and everything. And uh, I love... Okay, so obviously Ted is on Stella's side, right? I absolutely love just, just how much Ted gives zero fucks about Nora. Because they go out to dinner, right? And she's all like, oh, I'm a vegan and all this stuff. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to get the lamb. Yeah, <laughs> and I love because I, I've seen this clip recently where she's like, oh, I wish I could ignore my inner morals and stuff like that. And he's like, it's probably because you need protein. Need protein. I'm going to have the lamb. <laughs> yeah, and okay. I'm like, oh, shit, man. It's one of my favorite Ted moments because, like, he can be kind of an ass at times, right? But it was totally warranted here, and I loved it. I just, I love that, like, this happens, and then immediately, like, they jump, like, four weeks in the, like, to the future. And she's, like, <laughs> mowing down, like, a fucking, like, steak. And, like, she's, like, there's, like, bacon in this dipping sauce. And she's just, like, oh, oh, oh. Which, yeah, and I thought that was funny because if, if, if you've been a vegan or a vegetarian, anybody who does not eat meat for a long enough period of time, like, it sounds like she has been. She's going to get she really fucking sick. Really sick. That. Really sick after eating that. So, I hope yeah. it was worth it, lady. <laughs> yeah, and I thought about that, too. And then this is where we discover that, like, obviously, Nora and her <laughs> soon-to-be wannabe husband aren't together anymore. Yeah. And Ted has a great idea. They should pay for dinner because yep. Nora's in a rough place. Yeah. So he's having a mental conversation with Stella, and Stella seems to be on the same page. Yeah, I they love that they bring back out. the. I love that they bring back the telepathy conversation. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah, and Stella's like, "You're right. We should help her out." And Ted's like, "No, we will help her out." Ooh, and Stella, wow. Stella openly just says, "Nora, we'll take your wedding in three days." Yeah, it's like, yeah, we'll we'll pay you back for everything you spent, and we'll get married this Sunday. And it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> that's like what? I just, um, I, yeah. I mean, that's a very short. I mean, you figure even tux rental, and where the fuck does Stella get a dress in three days? I mean, she. I wouldn't be surprised if she already had it. I mean, if they've been <sighs> planning true. the wedding, I wouldn't be surprised. True. And, you know, she has this whole dream wedding planned out. I wouldn't be surprised if she's had it for a long time. Even, just, I wouldn't be surprised if she had it even before Ted. I could see that. Yeah, she seems like, she, like a planner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I, I really, I feel like she probably did. So um, this is, this is the point where, like, I'm just kind of like, eh, that's a wee bit fast. Like, they were moving fast to start. Yeah. This just like this went full <laughs> speed movie. You need to keep that bus at sixty five miles per hour, or it's gonna explode. And I mean, she tries to like explain right and everything, you know, how everything with Tony and everything. But like, honestly, maybe it's just because I've seen this episode so many times. All I can sit there and think about is all she's doing is talking about Tony. A hundred percent, but that happens yeah. no, so yeah. much. But like, she has not like of the stuff that we've seen with her. There has been zero mention. This zero. has not been a thing until now. Yeah, as far and as we have. That's seen. that's a theme that <clears throat> Stella is going to have throughout this episode. It's going to be Tony, yeah. Tony, Tony. 
And just like, I don't want to. I don't want like the R and B group. Ju- yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it's it's all it's all Tony all day. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. And and because like. And it makes Ted feel like he needs to up his game, kind of like, you know, she says, you know, Tony was never spontaneous. He's like, I could be spontaneous. He just throws water in his face. He's like, See, oh, I should have done that. That's a, the one thing that I hated because I almost feel like we know Ted Mosby. Ted Mosby plays the proverbial game of chicken with almost everything he does. Yeah. And I feel like. I'm going to explain this in a very childish way, but I feel like Ted's almost like that kid you look at and you go, I dare you to stick your tongue on the frozen pole. And he's like, no, thanks. And then you're like, I double dare you. And he's like, oh, I'm going to do it. (laughs) So with her being like, we should get married in three days. Ted instantly is like, whoa, stop right the fuck there. This is too fast for me. Yeah. And Stella goes, well, Tony would do it. And he's like, Three days, let's do it in two. Right? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I feel like she... Whether she did was doing it on purpose or not, she I feel like she was playing Ted a bit, you know? A trying, little bit. You know what I mean? Kind of manipulating uh, him in that aspect. Well, and there's so many things, knowing now, watching this episode, knowing where it goes, even by the end of this episode. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, so clearly... She knew she still had feelings for Tony that she wasn't fully over. <clears throat> yeah. So what is marrying Ted actually going to solve for you? It this is the way I looked at it. It's a way for her to kind of push those feelings to the side. That's it's like, such a it's like if I can focus on if I can focus on Ted, I won't be focusing on Tony kind of thing. You know what I mean? I feel like that's kind of shitty to it Ted, is shitty. though. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah, you know. Well, at she, least that was sort of explained to me, so I appreciate that. Yeah, she she one hundred percent is not over Tony, and that's the biggest problem here. But she's using Ted to almost like trick herself into being over Tony. Mm. You know what I mean? Like an over um, an overcorrection, over kinda. Yeah, and it's just like this is her way of of just avoiding the truth. That's just, fair. You know what I mean? Just ignoring the truth. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, so then we get to see Robin in her new job in Tokyo with yeah. her with, with her co-anchor, the Suzanne. Monkey. <laughs> I, I don't know the if monkey the monkey had. Suzanne. I say I don't know if the monkey had a name at all. I don't care it, if it had a name or not. But, uh, it reminded me of Suzanne. It did and it was throwing marshmallows at her. It was totally throwing. I mean, it's better than having shit thrown at you. <laughs> that is true. That is very true. <laughs> uh yeah i love it, it's funny because we don't get a lot of, of her in, in tokyo no not it's, at all it's like i mean she quit her job at the end of this we find yep. out so like it's honestly i i honestly thought there was more but maybe there wasn't maybe it was just this episode where that we really get to see it so uh, we'll guess we'll have to i was gonna see. say i think we only get one more snippet out of another episode where she's over there Okay, yeah, like maybe like a flashback kind of a thing where they show us something so. that's happening. Yeah, that would make sense. Uh, Ted tells Robin that she has to come to the wedding. He's so excited for her to to come to the wedding, and this is something that that I thought of because, like, obviously we know what Stella's reaction to all that is, right? But not a because in future, Ted even says, "I wish you know." You know, it was a mis- You know, that's a mistake. You know, kids don't don't invite your ex to a wedding. I wish somebody had told me that. Not a single one of them. It doesn't seem to bother a single one of them in the group. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, it's not a thought. Pro- like, they are a very vocal group. They would have said something if that if they like, especially Lily. Or oh yeah. Marshall, if they thought it, they'd have said it. Well, but and they so that- they didn't. This is one of the things that I thought as I was watching the episode back. Because now now I'm trying to watch it where, like, I'm not watching it with fresh eyes, per se, but I'm trying to watch it in a perspective to where, like, I can raise questions and stuff while we're doing this and looking back at it with a different perspective. So here's here's my question to you. Because out of the two of us, you've been the only one to get married. Yeah. So... 
Ted calls Robin to tell her she needs to be at the wedding. He didn't run that by Stella first. Well, I mean, it's one of his best friends. No, I understand Why, well, that. But here, here's what I'm saying. Like, it's one of his best friends. It should be assumed that that would be a thing. Here's my problem. If Stella had such an issue with it, why has she never brought it up? And I thought that side of it, too. Because especially once they get into the uh, conclusion about it at the bar, yeah. when it's the friends. And, you know, like, Marshall's like, no, she shouldn't come. and Or, no, Lily's like, she shouldn't come. Yeah. And I'm just kind of like, it's a good fucking discussion. But even, even we find out at the end, Robin thinks she shouldn't have come. Yeah. She's like, you know, it's weird. Well, and that's only because it's pretty obvious Robin still has feelings for Ted. Well, okay. And I so I have a question about this too because I want to address this and I was going to address it at the end of the episode, but I'll I'm going to address it here while we're talking about it and it's fresh. So when Robin brings it up to Ted, why it's a bad idea and how she still has feelings for Ted. And she's like, you know, you're jumping ahead to the end of the story. You want somebody else's, you know, happy ending. Does she not essentially do that to herself when Ted goes to her after Tracy dies? She takes Tracy's place. I don't think it's, um, you know, taking somebody else's happy ending. I think it's, I think that she did want Ted the whole time. I, th I think her marrying Barney was that. Fair. That was her way of. Pulling a Stella? Pull it, yeah. Kind of pulling away from Ted. Really. Because okay. deep down, it was always Ted with her. I mean, that that's just the way it is. But the thing that's different here about, like, between her and Ted, while we know that Ted always loved Robin, I mean, it, we see it all the way to the end of the show, Ted is the kind of guy that once he's in a, like, committed relationship, which really there's only been, there's only three throughout the show. Three. Really. It's Victoria, it's Stella, and it's Tracy. When he's in those relationships, no other girl matters. You're 100% correct. The only time that changed was when Victoria left. But when she was here, or when she was in New York with him, when they were physically together, no other girl mattered. No other girl mattered. No, I agree. The, but, like, so, so when she's over here essentially saying that, you know, she still has the feelings for him, and he's like, no, you know what I mean? Like, I'm marrying Stella. That makes sense to me. And it makes sense as to why, for Ted, having Robin at the wedding is no big deal. That's fair. You know? And that makes it makes a lot of sense that you say it that way too, because it's not until like he's uh when he's dating Janelle towards yeah. the end and he's trying to help Robin with like her wedding. She's like, you know, you're still in love with Robin and or no, he's not with Janelle at that point. Yeah, I mean but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That time frame. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's just kinda like I mean he does. He does bounce to Robin every time he's not with somebody yeah. serious. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's crazy. I hadn't thought about it like that. And it's funny because Ted kind of becomes Robin. He takes Robin's place when Robin's getting married. Like, you know, he wants yeah. he wants her. You know what I yeah. mean? But he plays it way more relaxed than she does. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's had a lot, a lot of time. <laughs> That's fair. But a yeah, so I like that they bounce straight from like this conversation to they're all showing up at the uh the resort. Yeah. And I love how the first interaction for the group at the resort goes. You know, Barney and Lily go over to get drinks. Marshall goes to settle the rooms and everything. And Lily and Barney find out there's no alcohol. No alcohol. And, and they're both like. <gasps> and Marshall, and finds, Marshall out. finds out it's all vegan. Yep. No meat. No meat. No meat and cheese. But he specifically says no meat. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I love, though, that when he sits down at the table, he's like, yeah, there's no meat. And then Willie's like, well, there's no alcohol. And he's like, even worse, 
I think that guy you were just talking to might have been the lead singer for the Spin Doctors. <laughs> Which I love because we literally mentioned the Spin Doctors in the last episode. Yeah. And, but <laughs> I was like, why is that a bad thing, though? Like, is I think that'd be really cool to meet a celebrity like that. Well, yeah, there's that. But also, like, based on what was said and what we had talked about in the previous episode, uh, where had, I think it was Barney who had said, you know, Having game for Marshall is is wearing that hat and getting two tickets to the spin doctors. It was yeah. something like that. I'm probably butchering the line, but like, and Mar- it's not like Marshall was like, no, I don't like the spin doctor because I really think he does. So I don't. Yeah, as a is an interesting uh, choice. We did miss something though, uh, real quick. Oh, the uh, phone before, call to Robin. No, well, well, yes, there's there's that, but no, before they leave the bar, Lily calls Barney out for not being against ted getting married oh yeah and he this is where he explains that he's using it to get back with robin but then we get this scene where he does all, he's like doing all these calculations it's like a beautiful mind or something you know what i mean and all these things are flush and there are i don't know if you caught them all but there are so many references to like barney's like catchphrases and stuff on I that board a floating them, a through all of them so the ones that i that i caught were uh so obviously their suit up is on there uh, high five, like H I, and then the number five is on there. High five, eighty three is in there. Uh, relationship equals freeway huh. is in there, which I thought was cool. Um, the hot crazy scale is in there. Uh, fish are approximately equal to women, which which I always thought was funny. Uh. And then this one, which I thought was just kind of clever, easy equals gin plus tonic to the power of four. <laughs> I'm gonna have to keep that one in mind. Yeah, I just thought I was like, that's 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 funny. There's just so many fun little things in there, man. I loved it. It was great stuff. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Then they they get to the to the wedding venue. But on the way, I don't know if you noticed, Marshall, Lily, and Barney. They play some Zitch Dog. I did. Marshall always winning that game. No, he can't lose that game. <laughs> it's too funny. Oh man. <laughs> I think yeah. Once they get to the resort, yeah. This is all just such a a quick story that unfolds. Yeah. And it's so fucking tragic. It is. So Ted comes in and he's like, "Oh, I'm glad all you guys are here. There's a problem and it Stella doesn't want Robin at the the wedding yep. and he explains why and we get it we get it you don't invite the ex to the wedding and why it wasn't brought up and yeah. but the whatever. problem is the problem is i don't honestly think it's, it has nothing to do with robin we know that yeah it's all she tony is, she is projecting her own feelings about tony onto ted and yeah. using robin as a scapegoat to get away with it you know what well, I mean? well that's 100 percent it because she never expected ted to do the stuff he does in this episode yeah like Absolutely. and i mean that's 100 percent what it come down to was is she was using robin as like a this is why we don't do it and blah 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 he, here's another thing though like she's like you have to tell robin that she can't come and the wedding's the next day right it it's a 20 hour flight from Japan, yep, back to New York. Honestly, I'm shocked she wasn't already on the plane when Barney called her. Um, and as far as Ted knows, she is on the plane. Why yep. did he not say that? He doesn't tell her. He, no. you know, he could have been like, "We tried to get a hold of Robin. She's already on the plane and on our way." Then yeah. it would have gave it would have gave like her the heads up that she was coming. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's yeah, no, no like, stopping that. I love how she kind of like just walks up behind Ted and she's like, oh, God, <laughs> what did Ted do this time? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And it's like if Ted had just been honest to his own, because like, like I said, as far as he knowledge, knew, yeah. she was already on the plane because Barney yeah. lied to everybody. So well, if he funny. had just been honest, could have avoided that. So as everything else breaks down, I, I realized because I'm going to jump ahead a little bit so that we can backtrack. We've been that. doing that all episode. It's cool. <laughs> um, 
so when Stella has the problem where Tony won't let her daughter come to the wedding. Oh, I have pride. So I have so many issues with this. Okay. It, I'm, I'm ignoring the issues to it and the gaslighting of it. Oh, it's, gonna, not, not, it's not just that, but we'll get into it. So <clears throat> that is essentially Ted's blue French horn to Stella. Yeah, it is. Going to get because like, yeah, she didn't know. Because she didn't know. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. just kind of did it. And like, mm-hmm. which again, though, it goes to show how romantic of a guy Ted is because he went out yeah, of his way absolutely. to go all the way back to New York from Shelter Island to get mm-hmm. his the daughter and come back. And I'm like, yep. good for fucking Ted. Here's my problem with it. So Lucy was supposed to come to the wedding and Tony was supposed to drive her. Okay. Yep. Who was Lucy going to stay with while there? Oh, that's a good point. Who was Lucy going to go home with? Because I guarantee you they were going to go right on a honeymoon. You're not wrong. I hadn't actually thought about that. So was she expecting Tony to drive all the way out there, drop her off, drive all the way home, then the next day drive all the way back to get her again? And in the meantime, leaving Lucy to just fend for herself? Yeah, that's a really good question. I hadn't thought about that. So, like, my, so like, wouldn't Tony have had to have been there anyways? Right. Like. Unless she was going to be with, like, one of Stella's family members, like her sister. Part, part of me, part of me wonders if Stella purposefully didn't invite. Because Tony says he didn't get an invite to the wedding. True. Where, but Stella says he wouldn't do. He wouldn't bring her. So I don't know. You mm. know what I mean? Like it makes mm. me wonder. Did did she just purposefully like shut her own daughter out? Like and used her to shut Tony out. Maybe. And then, and then use that to just kind of make Ted feel bad for her. Man, that'd be shitty. But I could see that. You know, because the other thing is like, then she runs away. With Tony, she has to take the kid with her, and then she has to explain all of that. Yep. And like they're on the boat at the end, and but you don't see Lucy. You don't see Lucy. She's sitting somewhere else, and they're off together doing their thing. So honestly, it makes me wonder if they're actually just shitty parents. (laughs) So, okay. So instead of backtracking (laughs) to get to this point, I want to continue this from from this point because there's shit I noticed. Built well, no, we got to back up a little bit. Okay. Okay. So, we'll back up just... Oh, God. We gotta back up a little bit further. Just go wherever we gotta go. When Stella is telling Ted, you can't invite um, an ex to the... Oh, an ex. When when ex specifically. When they're on the ex conversation. Mm -hmm. Did you notice she's wearing a purple sweater? Oh, shit. I did not. She's wearing a purple fucking sweater while she's having this conversation with him. (sighs) Also, when Robin shows up, She's wearing a green sweater. Okay. Green was the color she met. Um, she was wearing when she met Ted. Oh, yeah. Not she to mention yeah, yeah, yeah. what color is green typically associated with. Yeah, green, green and purple. That's pretty no, common. Jealousy. Oh. oh, oh, for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Green is typically associated with jealousy. Yeah. Robin straight out is like, you shouldn't marry Stella. Blah, blah, blah. That's true. That's true. So not only is Stella wearing purple and uh, Robin's wearing green. Okay, so now we get back to where we were. There, are, Tony and Stella are on the boat. They're going back. She's still in her wedding dress. Tony's and and Robin went from being dressed up for the wedding to back into her green sweater as she's sitting there staring at Stella with a look of disbelief on her face. Yeah. Because she knows what what's going on, and her heart's going out for Ted right now. Because now she knows Ted is waiting for Stella, and Stella's clearly not there. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. But purple, purple man, uh, th- th- you can't you can't tell me that they, that there weren't some of these that were planned. They I just I just can't buy it. I can't buy that it was all coincidence. I really want to have Carter or Craig on the show so I can I can get some. That hell, even just like let's find out who the wardrobe fucking 
Yes. Like the head of the wardrobe was, you know. <laughs> we'll just start digging into it, guys, where we're going to be like, hey, we're going to have so-and-so on. They were from this department. They Pam, have this department. Fry, come on the show. <laughs> I would love to have Pamela Fryman on here. That'd be dope. I have so many questions about behind-the-scenes characters. Oh, absolutely, man. Like, absolutely. tell me what Jason Siegel was really like. <laughs> I've heard he's a funny fucking guy. That's what like, I've heard, too. Like, vulgar and funny. That's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. And a smoker. Yeah, yeah. That is true. I don't know if he still is, but I don't know. I don't know. But uh, uh, so we get some stuff with uh, Nora uh, essentially telling Barney that, you know what? We're going to fuck. You know, This is mean? such a great side story. She's not asking. She's telling him that's it's well, going down. And I love how, like, yes, she pr- pretty much tells him, we're doing this. And he's like, well, I'm saving myself for somebody. And she's like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> she's we're like, doing bring this. them. She's, she's like, bring them. Yeah. So then after Robin and Ted have their moment, Robin goes to Barney for, like, yeah. I need some relaxing. I snuck this bottle of uh, scotch in. And then she's like, there's a naked girl tied to your headboard. Yep. And Barney's like, oh, yeah, yeah, about that, you know. There's clothes everywhere. I just got to tidy up a little bit. I'll meet you. And as Robin walks away, he knows he lost his shot at the wedding. And I'm like, well, good for him banging Nora, at least. And then Nora walks up. And I'm like, oh, shit. Yep. And then she goes. They all go in the room. And here's my question. Okay. So they're implying here that Barney's about to have a three-way. Yep. But I don't think it actually happens. Okay, really? because later on in the series, there's a moment where him and Ted are kind of fighting over who's going to get the belt. And they and it's said that neither of them have done it yet. Now, the only way that that he has that this is a thing that he actually did is if it doesn't fall within the rules of no, the, of the we belt. I thought we already passed that episode with Trudy. And uh, no, girl. it's a, it's it's later. It's later. It could. It's when oh, it was when the belt comes back. Yeah. I mean, I know what you're talking about because he ta- he's sitting on the rug and he spills the wine. Maybe that's this episode. Maybe that's what he's referring to is this moment. No, the the thing with the the rug that's the Trudy episode. Because he's talking about how he never got the chance. Because oh, he blew, shit. blew his chance. No, it's it, it's brought up again later. Oh. Yeah, it's not like a big full episode, but it's brought up again later. Oh shit, I don't think I remember that. And and it's mentioned that neither of them have done it yet. Huh. And so like I said, it's either he just doesn't do it or it doesn't fall within the parameters of the three-way belt, Fair. which would be uh all three participants can't be a total of uh, 400 pounds. They can't be over that weight total. And they can't be above an age of 83 total. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, so, like, maybe they one of them was a little too old for that to, to have been a thing. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. Shit, that's crazy. <laughs> it, it makes you wonder. It's like, did he? I don't know. <laughs> Ted, Ted, it's the belt. <laughs> yeah, it's the Because, I mean, he would have been like, yeah, belt time. It wouldn't surprise me if he bailed, though, because yeah, of his feelings for Robin. It really wouldn't. I'm just saying. I can see that. Saying. Maybe he just jerked off in the corner. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he had a little performance anxiety, but once one of them left, he was there. He was ready to go, and then he pounded it. There it is, man. There it I is. mean, we've all been there. It's true. Uh, I also want to go back and talk a little bit about Tony. Tony's a dickhead, first off. When uh, Ted goes to get Lucy, he is just such a douchebag during that scene. It and it, is. it makes me want to punch him in the face, really. Um, but I also laughed because Ted continues to be a corrector, and he even points it out to himself. <laughs> Listen, it, it, it's in this scene where he's correcting himself. That he's like, why do I keep doing this? Yeah, and I'm just like, why do you keep doing it, man? Like, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> yep, I've stuck it to her plenty of times, Tony. <laughs> it's oh, like, man. man, what are you doing, man? 
Oh. Right? Like, he is not helping his own case. It's like, dude, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. But, uh, yeah. And then, I mean, we know that Robin quits her job. Uh, pretty much that's it, because Robin leaves, and she, that's when she sees Tony and, and, and Stella. And Yep. And we find we, out that find Stella out the had a note. Yeah. And, and that's where the episode ends. Like, Listen. there's nothing. I'm going to ask you a question because this, I don't know why my mind went here when I was watching the episode, but I'm going to, I'm going to relay this to another scene. that's very similar, but I want, <laughs> want your opinion, which one's worse. Okay. So there's this scene where the Ted and the gang read the note from Stella. And then there's the scene in the dark night where Alfred reads the note from Rachel. That's meant for Bruce. About how she's she's not gonna leave uh, Harvey because she doesn't think that Bruce will ever not need Batman. But then Rachel dies, and yeah. she, you know, Alfred burns the note. Whose note hurt who worse? Because hmm. mind you, Bruce never gets to read it, but Alfred reads it, and he protects him by burning the note. Yeah, yeah. Letting letting Bruce believe that Rachel is at some point gonna leave Harvey for him. Well, I mean, honestly, I think Ted is, is worse because, like, it was their wedding day. I think that's what I think it's the timing that makes it worse. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's where I would that's where I would go with it. I respect you know? that. Well, uh, do, do you disagree, though? Like, do you... I don't disagree. I just I don't know. In my mind, I was like, man, I'm like. I think Rachel's just hurt slightly. I feel like if Bruce would have read the note, it would have been a different, wholly different situation. Yeah. Um. Oh man, I don't know. I don't want to start talking about the Dark Knight because I won't stop. But <laughs> that's where my mind went while I was reading the episode. I was like, man, I'm like people are always leaving notes like, oh, I love you, but I'm gonna do so and so and be with so and so because it's just so much easier. I am going to do so-and-so. I just, I feel like, because this is the climax for Stella. Like, Stella leaves. We don't see her again until the episode where um, Ted's on the cover of New York uh, Magazine. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this episode starts to make me hate her so much. Because, like... I don't ever want to have that feeling. Like, I only want to ever get married once. And I swear to God, if I was to ever make it to my wedding day and that's when somebody decides that, like, they can't be with me and leave me. Yeah, I'm no. going to need a lawyer. I get it, man. Um, as as someone who has gotten married and had it not last, uh, I, I have no interest in doing it again. So I get that. I get that 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 that, that desire to only want to have it, to do it once. But yeah, if if it was a if it was a left at the altar situation, I, I can't guarantee there wouldn't have been some fists thrown. Maybe maybe that's a, what I'm saying, man. I would have went to a wedding singer. Yeah, I have the mic, and you will listen to every damn word I have to say. It's so true. <laughs> oh man, <it's> so true. <laughs> You were like, uh, calm down. I'll yeah. tell you when to calm down. <laughs> uh, all right, folks. So that uh, that is season four, episode five, Shelter Island. Uh, John, what are your overall thoughts on this episode? Stella's a whore. I mean, she's a terrible fucking person, man. Like, like I'm literally tearing I up my eyes her. right now just because of everything that happens in that episode. I loved her up until this episode. Yeah, I loved her, and then she just destroys everything. Oh yeah, and it's like they've been together for a while at this point, and she undoes everything and burns Ted's heart to pieces in a matter of hours. Yeah, yeah, it's it, really it's, it's probably twenty four hours, probably really. Think about it, right, right around that time frame. It's just, I don't know, man. She, like I said, she went from being one of my f- absolute favorites to one of my absolute least favorites for, you know, that. No, that I get that. that. Like, and it, I feel like that's hard to do. <laughs> and she managed to do it. But. 
But you know what that means. You know what it's time for, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. It's time for Barney's blog. Suit up, bitches. That's right. Okay, so this episode does not have a Barney's blog attached to it. Really? I'm shocked yeah. on that one, actually. I am, too. I'm shocked that Barney wouldn't have done something about <laughs> marriage he, or about he was Robin. too busy about, getting tied up. I, yeah, yeah, you know? Um, so there there are, you know, some yeah, yeah. that aren't connected to any episode. So I pulled one out from, from the bag that I've got here. Uh, and we're doing this one. This one, actually, it's funny because this one was written on the day that this episode dropped. Oh no shit. So it's like so it's like Barney wrote a blog entry. It just doesn't connect to the episode. It just doesn't connect to the episode. So okay. that's why that's why I specifically chose this one. Like, okay. Well, why not? And it is titled The Bro Code. Yes. Yeah. All right. So it says, At long last I have published the bro code. The final authority on acceptable behavior between uh between and among dudes. The bro code d- definitively answers some of mankind's most profound dilemmas, like what happens if I accidentally brush against another bro's junk? (laughs) And how many pizzas should I order? And can I sleep with a bro's ex-girlfriend? This life-saving document is now available both in bookstores and online. I'm going to have to get my hands on this book for no current context at all, but you know. (laughs) Uh, it says an informative and valuable read for men and women alike. The bro code is the perfect stocking stuffer heh, for ho- for the holiday season, but don't take my word for it. And it says uh, critical acclaim for the bro code. It's a bunch of like quotes from people about the bro code. So we've got uh, this is the finest piece of literature ever written. Now, uh, now will you give me my phone back, Barney huh. uh, from Theodore M. Which is t- yeah, obviously Ted, Ted Mosby. Uh, this is by far the most disgusting, disparaging, stomach churning thing I've ever read, which means a lot if you've ever seen one of my husband's grocery lists. Guess who that's from? It's got to be from Lily. Yep, Lily A. Uh, you'll howl with delight from Stephen King. Stinson uses language like a scalpel digging through our deepest emotional tissue to expose the very core of the human psyche. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. (laughs) (laughs) Finally, a book worth reading. God. (laughs) Stinson beat me to it. J.D. Salinger. Okay. Uh, Jefferson's out. Stinson's in Rachel M <laughs> says, pre- says president Mount Rushmore national preservation society. I don't know why he's got that <laughs> in there. Uh, an entertaining beach read from Pope Benedict the set a 16th. Like, okay. <laughs> Simply put you. And that's from Robin S. <laughs> uh, let's see out of this world. It says just as alien creature from another planet. Okay. I'm sorry, what? From Maya Angelou. <laughs> I have a hundred words for Snowflake, but only one word for the bro code. Awesome. That's from some Eskimo, maybe. Some Eskimo, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. And, and then this book, this is the last one. This book makes me want to rethink my career. Mark, the dude who wrote the gospel. Wow! Oh man, and that, my friends, is the bro code, uh, <laughs> uh, and it is also this week's edition of Barney's blog. <laughs> yeah, so there it is, folks. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got any any thoughts on that there, there, John? No, but <laughs> go on Amazon, pick up your copy of the bro code today. Yeah, there are so many. He's, He's got, I believe, four books, which various um, Barney's blogs will talk about them. But there, I'm afraid there are four books out there, out there in the world. We got the Bro Code, we got um, the Playbook, the and playbook. Then, there's, then there's two others that I can't remember what they're called. But there are, yeah. So, you know, I, I, I want to pick them up. I think it'd be fun to have, you know, something. I mean, hey, if anyone if wants to, reader. 
wants to send us a little scratch to pick up these books, you can cash tag me, cash tag Merc Trader 22. Mm-hmm. Or you can cash tag me, cash tag JMade1. There it is, folks. Check us out there. Uh, and I think with uh, that, that's all I got. So if you, unless you have anything else for them, you can uh, let everybody know where they can find you, my friend. Listen, still pretty simple. Still on X, still here, still there. Facebook, <clears throat> YouTube, I'm here. I'm on the Merc with a uh, movie blog, uh, YouTube. It's true. You are. You're Find right here, me. my friend. And uh, you can find me on Twix. I'm calling it Twix from now on. Twix. <laughs> you can find me on Twix at uh, Movie Blog Merc. That is the Twix page for my site, Merc with a Movie Blog. Uh, which you, if you go to Merc with Movie Blog dot com, I've been posting some uh, reviews from the uh, film festivals that I've been covering. Uh, this past month so go and check those out um and if you are watching this on youtube you are watching it on the merc with the movie blog youtube channel so please be sure to hit that like button smash that subscribe button and click that little bell wherever the fuck it is man and remember when you click that little bell you can set notifications to let you know when josh drops new content yes whatever it may be yeah whatever it may be i mean who knows at some point it might just be him spanking a monkey you never know suzanne come here (laughs) <laughs> will it have future, marshmallows? We won't spank the monkey. The monkey will spank us. It Bong. Will. Bong. Uh, and you can follow us on Twix <laughs> and Instagram at last call. H-I-M-Y-M. So be also sure on Instagram. That. I said that. Yes, Twix oh, and Instagram at a last call. I mean, pretty much anywhere. Twitter, Instagram, um, Patreon, if you want to sign up Patreon. That's our anchor page. It's still you can still do it I as mean, pretty anchor. much anywhere we're available is last call H I M Y M. It's true. I try to keep it that way. There's also a link we have a on link the Twitter tree. page. Yeah. 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 So I was gonna say, I mean, we're not hard to find. No, not at all. And I'm pretty sure it's Linktree at last call H I M Y M. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Whatever the, the link tree. I mean, uh, we're literally we're is. like I know this is an old school reference, and only Josh and I are going to understand. But last calls becoming an infection. We, you can't get rid of us. <laughs> you can't. You can't. Like you can uh, spread the ointment on, but it's not going to do you any good. Also, head over to uh, to the Twix page there, and uh, I think it'll still be up by the time this episode uh, first airs. There's a poll uh, up on the page. Uh, about uh, merch and stuff so we'd like to hear from you guys what you guys thoughts are about uh, us doing some merch uh we'd love to hear your thoughts um but i think that's all i got for him man what do you got for him i'll keep it simple tonight guys happy halloween you don't have to go home but you can't listen here catch you guys next time <laughs>